What's up guys? So, um, the prone foil board is coming along. So my custom shaped prone foil board for that hydrofoil I got back there. So a video for that will be coming, well, eventually. While I was making that board, uh, I needed a template for it. So I catted something up on the computer and I thought, hey, why don't I share with you guys how to create a template on the computer? Let's get into it. Oh, and this bucket is not very comfortable. The first thing we need to do is we need to grab a piece of software called Inkscape. It's an open source vector drawing sketching program, kind of like Adobe Illustrator. It's free. I've already installed it. I've launched it. So I got it right here. So this is where we're going to trace out our outline for the surfboard. The next thing we need is a picture of a surfboard in order to, well, trace out a template. I just did a quick search on Google for surfboard, find one that you like. Um, I'm just going to pick, uh, let me see. Oh, look at that. That looks familiar. You're going to want one that you're kind of directly, uh, you want the front or the back of the board directly facing you in order to get the outline. That looks familiar too. Okay, this board here looks uh, good enough. I don't know what it is. I'm just going to pick this because that's what's handy. And I'm gonna use this software called Snip and Sketch. It comes in Windows with Windows. And I'm gonna do a new screen capture so I can just capture the board. And it just so happens it has the stringer. I could grab the stringer as well. But for this exercise, I'm just gonna grab the board itself. I get a snip of it in here. And then I can do a copy up here at the top right hand corner or control C, keyboard shortcut. And I'm going to go into Inkscape and I'm going to right click and do a paste. Now you could also import this in. You could save the image to your desktop and uh, load the, the image into Inkscape that way as well. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to use hold down the control key and mouse wheel in and it'll zoom in. As you can see, it's zooming in, zooming out, just by scrolling the mouse wheel. So as I'm scrolling it here, I have control held down as I'm scrolling the mouse wheel back and forth. And the other thing you can do is you can hold down the wheel, the mouse wheel, and you can drag and move the canvas around. Okay, so with that out of the way, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit and we're gonna trace out the outline. So the next thing I'm going to do is over on the toolbar, I'm going to select this pencil here with a curve, the blue pencil, and it's draw, bezier, curves, and straight lines. So I'm gonna click on that, and then I'm gonna zoom in using control and mouse wheel, and I'm gonna click on the bottom of the surfboard and the bottom of the stringer, and then I'm gonna scroll up to the top using my mouse wheel, you can just use the mouse wheel and just without control held down because that's for zooming if you hold down control. But if you just mouse wheel on the canvas, it'll just scroll up and down. So I'm gonna scroll all the way to the top to the point of the surfboard. And then I'm gonna hold down the control key. And then what that does is it locks the line to be perfectly vertical. So it locks it at a 90 degree, I guess, perpendicular to the canvas, to the paper. Anyways, it just locks it off. So you can see it's straight. No matter how I move back and forth, it's straight. So I'm gonna click at the top of the surfboard and then I get a line. Now, uh, from that, I'm gonna join using the same tool, the same pen tool. I'm going to select my next point and I'm just gonna trace around the surfboard. I'm gonna zoom down or scroll down and keep tracing. You don't have to be perfect because we're going to adjust this afterwards. So I'm just gonna keep tracing, tracing. When we get to the bottom, we'll just, uh, because there's a more of a rounder curve, I'm just going to um, add more points. Okay, there. And then I'm gonna close it off by clicking on that first dot at the bottom of the stringer. So now, we have our profile traced out roughly. Next, we need to refine our profile. So on the left-hand toolbar, I'm gonna to click on the second one, the second icon from the top, and it's called Edit Paths by Nodes. There's also a keyboard shortcut N that you could click on as well. So now, it changes all those points 
that uh, I had clicked on to create the outline into these dots and those are nodes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight, I'm going to left mouse click and highlight a bunch of them. I'll highlight the ones that are on the screen. And up on your tool, on your top toolbar, second toolbar, I guess, you see there's a bunch of icons here. We're going to select this one here, make selected nodes smooth. So I'm going to click on that and it turns all those nodes into curves that we can manipulate, or I should say, I guess points, nodes that we can manipulate. So they have like these little handlebars here and I can twist them and I can move them around and see what I can do here, all kinds of good stuff. So what I can do is also click on the node that I created and drag it out, drag it around. I can move it out, move it back. If I had a bunch of them selected, as you saw earlier, I can move a whole bunch of them at the same time, but I can move one by one like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select a couple of these and move them around. The other thing I need to do is I need to convert the rest of the nodes so that they're smooth. So I'm gonna highlight the rest of them. I'm gonna click on the make selected node smooth and that'll add handlebars to all of them. And then I can zoom in and I can manipulate each one separately, kind of refine the shape. You can just take your time, take as much time as you want and play with it. I'm just gonna do this very quickly because um, this is just gonna be a rough profile just so I can show you guys how to do it. But as you can see here, I'm just refining the curve and I can zoom in for a little more granularity and then adjust the handlebars if I want, just to kind of move it around. It looks actually quite good. Like this here, maybe you can just go in a tad. So overall, I think that profile looks decent. It's a little weird right here along the edge here. I could probably smooth that out a bit more. Okay, it's a little bumpy, but that's okay. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time at this. Oops. Control Z, by the way to undo if you make a big mistake. Okay, overall, that's not a bad profile. I'm gonna zoom out, so control mouse wheel out, and then I'm going to click on the, the select tool, the top left on the toolbar, and I'm gonna click on the image, and I'm gonna just move the image out of the way. So actually, in fact, I'm just gonna delete it. Now that we have that done, we need to, this is too small, because we need to rescale this so that it's the correct size. So I'm gonna use my select tool, so it's the top uh, tool on the toolbar, on the left-hand toolbar. I'm gonna select my profile. If you don't have this transform on the right-hand side, I'll show you where you can, uh, you can turn that on. You can come under Object, under the Object menu, and you can go all the way down to the fourth one from the bottom, and you can do Transform. So now I have the ability to scale or transform my profile. So I've highlighted my profile. I'm going to change the units into inches because that's for whatever reason surfboards always seem to be measured in inches, feet and inches. I'm gonna say for the surfboard if I know roughly I'm gonna say it's uh, it's 20 inches wide. So half a 20 because it's half the surfboard is 10. So I'm gonna say 10 inches. And then for the height um, I can either allow it to scale proportionally by clicking on this, or I can enter in a value and uncheck scale uh, proportionately. I'm gonna leave it scale proportionally. It says that it'll scale to 74, which is fine. Um, it's probably a little long, but that's okay. Maybe I'll scale it to, let's say 66 inches. And I'm gonna click apply. And actually, oops, I gotta turn off that scaling. So I'm gonna do 10 and I'm gonna do 66 and I'm gonna click apply and it enlarged the, the surfboard template. So you can play around with that to whatever size you want to scale your, your board template to. So now I'm gonna re-highlight if it's not already highlighted the template and I'm gonna come under the edit menu and then I'm gonna go down to resize page to selection. I'm gonna click on that and what that does is it resizes my canvas so you can see here that it's resized to fit the surfboard template. We're almost done. What I do like to do is I like to add some color in the inside of the template. So I'm gonna fill it with a color of some sort. So uh, I'm gonna use my paint bucket tool on the toolbar. So you can look for that, this bucket tool over here on the toolbar. And I'm gonna just 
make it yellow. So now that we have the color selected, we're going to add some numbers or letters or anything on the surfboard template just to denote the orientation of the surfboard. Because if you were to print this out right now, it would be really hard to put it together because we're going to print this as tiles. So I'm going to come select on the text tool and I'm going to change the text size to like something really big. So like 144 and I'm just going to start adding some text everywhere. It makes it easier when you print this off to reorient it. There's probably a better way of doing it, but this is the way I know how to do it and it's just easy. So I'm just gonna add a bunch of text here. It doesn't look pretty, but it'll do. So now that we have the template, we have the color, and then we have letters or numbers in order to help with the orientation. I've probably added a few too many, but there's probably other ways of doing it, like I said, but this is how I know how to do it and it's worked for me. Now it's time to save this. So we're gonna come under file and we're gonna do save as. I'll just give it a name, I'll call it surfboard template. And then for the save as type, I'm gonna save it as a PDF, portable document format. Now I'm gonna click on save. It'll come up with this export. I'm gonna use, um, use documents page size as the export. Uh, just click OK and now it will export that out and here's my template I'm gonna open it up and there it is here as just one page and what we can do in with a PDF is we can come under when we go to go print I can click on print and then I can do poster and what that will do it will print this as tiles you can use other PDF printing software like Foxit that's another PDF software that you could use. I'm using uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader here, and then you can add cut marks. That's basically it. And then all I gotta do, I gotta make sure to set it to the right printer. So I'll set it to my printer. Ah, okay, that's better. So now that I have it set to the right printer, it's gonna print it out on eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper like that. And it's gonna have cut marks. I can set an overlap here in inches, and that's it. And then I can click print, and it will print it off. Um, and we'll cut it out and that's the template. That's how you do it, A really simple. All right, so now that I have my template all printed out from PDF using the tile function in the PDF reader. So the template kind of looks like that uh, in individual sheets. What you do is there's these marks here, just trim off those sections and then you can just align them up each page and tape them together. So you can see here there's these alignment marks here and you can just cut across and that way you can just line up each sheet and just tape it down. So instead of doing that on this one for the sake of time, I'll just show you one that I already did for the prone foil board that I'm working on. So here you can see I've already taped the sheets together, cut out the outline, and there's my profile. It's a little crinkly because uh, I had it folded up and stored because uh, I wasn't using it because I already had traced out the template. But yeah, that's it. That's how you do it. And then to do the other side, you would just flip it over, trace it out. So that is how you create a template. Well, that was a super quick video to show you how I create templates. There's more than one way to create a template. You could freehand it. You could use like French curves. You could, uh, I don't know, you could buy a template. You could download templates, all kinds of different ways. But this gives you another option to make your own templates and it's super easy. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more surfing related content and all kinds of other content. And I'm hoping that this prone foil surfboard will be one of the next few videos that I post coming real soon. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.